Welcome, Saturday 17th of August and my job today on this beautiful day is to work on the mizzen mast foot. So spin you around, there's the mizzen mast foot and that's where it's going to go. We've, that's been, uh, had some extra layers of fiberglass cloth on it. It's um, been filled and painted. That goes on there. The only challenge at the minute is by filling it and so on, we've hidden where the holes are. I'm going to go and do the drilling from below for the first few holes, probably all of them actually, and then that will go on there. And we're going to bed it. Excuse the mess, I'll turn to me so you don't, can't see all the mess in the cockpit. We've got this butyl sheet so instead of butyl tape which is brilliant for sealing bolts and so on this sheet which came when we bought our windows what i've got here are the cutouts from the inside of the windows absolutely brilliant for sealing windows because you've got no joints you put that on you put the window on and then you trim the inside and outside and just have a continuous strip of it around the outside what i've got left is big enough so that i can bed the whole plate onto that butyl it's really mess free very easy to use and will seal it beautifully we will use some normal butyl strip around the heads of the bolts water doesn't get through them and drip down inside and I've got this WD-40 specialist white lithium grease which is supposed to provide metal to metal connections long lasting protection against rust and corrosion so we'll see how well that goes Ooh. I'm gonna go and have a look at uh, drilling the holes now 10 millimeter holes for these bolts Okay, I'm just going to go and drill these holes, but I thought I'd just show you as I walk through to the aft cabin. This is, I think, our favourite transformation we've done on the boat so far. It was a traditional V-berth layout, sort of, and you this was the, the cutout of the V, and it had two single beds that could be made a double, but when it was a double, you had to climb up to this height, so basically waist height, in order to get on the mattress, which was then seven feet wide. Absolutely ridiculous. So the transformation we did was to create a Pullman style berth, a double berth on that side, and this step, and this will eventually be a forward facing seat as the way on. And not only is it our favorite transformation, it's a really comfy, very nice bed, it also meant we've massively strengthened where I'm about to fit the mizzen mast step above here. And before there was a bulkhead, you can see here, we've cut out that bulkhead, which um, at least one commentator said we were completely bodging everything and the whole boat was so weak. However, if you look on both sides there, we've created um, multiple layers of fiberglass tape to support it. We've put in this vertical beam. Yes, it's softwood, but it is epoxied and screwed to the original plywood to make sure that it uh, doesn't bend out of shape. Epoxied to the hull. So that transfers load straight down. We've got a smaller one here because that's really just a door post. And then in there, we've got another big one, again, epoxied and screwed to the bulkhead. And then between them, we put in this double thickness beam. The aft one goes right the way across, tapering out to about here. Epoxy glued and fiberglassed to the hut, to the deck, to the plywood, these two glued together and then this big lump of uh, multiple layers of plywood put above them 
and you can see I chamfered it because it was just so way overkill in terms of weight and strength. We've got bolts as well, so we're not just relying on fiberglass, but they are bolted together in multiple places. We are really confident that compared to what was here, this is massively stronger. There was one, this bulkhead ends where it originally did, that line there. This one ended here and between them there was one little sheet of plywood which when we took the headlining off it actually fell down, it wasn't fastened to anything. So for supporting the mizzen mast weight we have really connect this to, connected this together in a much stronger way and in the process we've created the space that will become the ensuite heads properly um, and it's larger. You can see the diagonal on the floor there so we've gained a little bit of space into there which gives you a lot more knee room and in fact when you sit on the loo the idea is that your knees can actually go underneath here. The only thing that this heads compartment is now short of and it's simply that the nature's head is quite high is headroom. I'm just brushing this um, after part of the cockpit but when we put the new floors in we will essentially drop the nature's head down a tiny bit just to give us that little bit extra headroom. So what we've done, oh, we, we also in taking out um, stuff for the old engine we've gained that much depth. It's not got much height because it's under the cockpit but it does make it feel a lot more spacious and getting rid of the door which was running along where the height changes there and was very narrow that corridor feels a lot more spacious. We are going to count the corridor as part of our um, cabin and so the door to our cabin will be where you can see the, the chart table begins at the moment. So this all feels a lot more spacious to us, a much, much more comfortable bed. We don't need single beds. Um, we're a couple living on a boat. We wanted a permanent double bed, and this is absolutely brilliant. OK, enough of the waffle. I'm going to drill these holes now. There is a little bit of epoxy that's dribbled through, so I will have to put the sander, little finger belt sander on that to clear it and you can see the holes in the FR4 where the bolts are going to go. They're blocked up with the fiberglass cloth on top at the moment. There's six of them and hopefully they are, well I know they are, positioned so that we can put, um, oh that's not one of them, but we can put penny washers uh, on the underneath. Let's get drilling. Okay, first hole Well, that's going to take a bit of vacuuming up, isn't it? I thought I'd be able to hold this box here, but it's a bit tricky. Finding gaps for the drill to go up. Oh, that one went easier. Right, I'll go and uh, connect the dots from up above, I think, or at least have a look at doing that. OK, the forward holes came through. The others didn't, just couldn't angle the drill uh, or 
clear the drill properly to do it so I can drill those got these lined up now I can drill those down and connect up the dots okay fantastic six holes just perfectly lined up we can cut the uh, butyl and uh, get this on fantastic Alrighty, you've stuck the butyl on, it's so simple, it's sticky on one side, not sticky on the other, until you peel back the backing. So, that gives you a nice clean surface, and I'll just go and re-drill from the bottom so I've got neat holes in the butyl before I put the base on. You started. Okay. This going on there, I've got holes in this butyl sheet, butyl sheet for the bolts, and I've got this bit of the butyl strip. So it's a kind of roll it into a little sausage and wrap it around the bolt, and then going to spray with this lithium grease which is supposed to stop galvanic corrosion push that in and then rinse and repeat I rinse in grease you won't have been heard. Jane said she doesn't think I should re rinse it. And I said, I'm rinsing it in grease. Because my jokes are funnier. It doesn't feel like this, because it's so runny, is going to be as effective as that um, more solid tube of grease that we used to use, um, but we ran out and haven't got any replacement. They didn't have any in the chandlery here. What was that called? Um, dialectic grease. So. Hoping this is similar, but anyway, there is that strip of butyl as well between the dissimilar metals. And the trick with the butyl is that you do all the tightening with the place where you don't have the butyl. So we'll do all the tightening below and just hold the bolts heads in place with a screwdriver on top and then you don't force the butyl out of the way Right, I'll just have to get a hammer and knock that in. Okay, Jane's going to hold the screwdriver. I'm going to go and put the nuts on. I didn't film myself doing up some bolts, but there are bolts now done up. There, there. Oh, I don't know if you can see up those holes or or you can just about see one there. So six bolts, 10 millimeter with nice big washers. And I forgot to say earlier, above this plywood is actually an FR4 backing plate that completely uh, covers the whole of the area. That's on thickened epoxy. So um, yeah, 
it's very, very, <laughs> very strong. Right, I should just show you what it looks like, like outside now. It's got windy out here again, but there's the chief screwdriver holder. And you can see we've got a nice squeeze out of butyl at all of those. Uh, as they say on the crazy car building channels, that ain't going anywhere. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and comment. Uh, and hopefully in a few weeks, we'll actually see a Mrs. Mars standing up in there. Bye.